One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Mateusz Owczarek and it's something's going on. Okay. Uh, my name is Mateusz Owczarek and together with Miron Fizak, together we'll be introducing you into the world of probabilistic data structures and Kafka streams as well. Without further ado, let's move on to the agenda. Uh, firstly, I will try to talk something about Kafka streams, uh, mostly about the features and the uh, general concepts behind it. Then uh, Miron will talk about his experiences with probabilistic data structures. And finally, it's going to be a commercial time. We're going to introduce you into the code, actually real code, behind our library that we developed lately uh, that tries to solve the problem of connecting probabilistic data structures with Kafka Streams topology builders. Okay, let's start with the beginning. What is Apache Kafka? So, Initially, it was conceived as a messaging queue. Uh, at its core, it's a performance distributed commit log, but the times where Apache Kafka was only a performant event bus are probably gone. Now, uh, I find it as a distributed event streaming platform, and all of it is because a Kafka Streams library has been introduced. What is it? It's uh, just a lightweight Java library that you can include in your project that's based on uh, any JVM language. It, it, it can be Java, it can be Scala, uh, that enables transforming the data from one topic to another, I mean Kafka topic. Mm. The key feature of Kafka streams is that no separate cluster for computation is required. Comparing in, it, it to the Apache Spark or Apache Flink, where Kafka is just a, just a message queue, just an event bus that provides the data to, to the computational cluster, Kafka Streams reuses the actual Kafka cluster to perform a computation in a streaming fashion. It is code-centered. It has a Scala API, actually. Not only Java API, but also Scala. And all the buzzwords are included. So it's highly scalable, it's fault-tolerant, uh, it comes with all of the Kafka goodies, right? It has, it is scalable with the parti Kafka partitions. Uh, it includes Kafka security and exactly one semantics. It is uh, both equally, equally viable for small, medium, and large use cases because uh, where Kafka streams really shines is uh, is are small projects, probably uh, like. Uh, like a small projects under the 200, 300 lines of code. But nevertheless, Kafka streams scales amazingly with, uh, with Kafka uh, partition semantics so that it can be really nicely used in production as well in medium and large use cases. It can be also easily deployed to the containers, VMs, or cloud if you want, uh, just as well as you deploy your production application. How can we use Kafka Streams? Well, on its core, it transforms messages from one Kafka topic to another. So it can be really easily used to perform Kafka-based platform integrations. Uh, there are some cases, probably, that you know that someone can use Apache Spark to just enrich and transform the data from one topic to another. And to do it, it requires uh, setting up additional computational cluster. With Kafka Streams, you can perform it only with Apache Kafka cluster, and it's extremely useful. What's more, it can be uh, nicely f it can nicely fit in stream fashion alerting services and uh, near real-time business intelligence streaming pipelines. Actually, probably in uh, somewhat about two hours, uh, there will there will be a talk about it, uh, how Kafka Streams can be used in in such a case as a production-ready example. So I invite you, invite you all to, to attend it. Uh, so what are the key features? What can you use, actually, uh, inside of the... What features can you use inside of the Kafka Streams? The first one would be aggregation. And all of the stateful, ag stateful operations that, that Kafka Streams provides. What aggregation does is actually transforming uh, n messages into one message. So it compresses the data input to the output. Aggregation is key-based operation, so we need to group, key, uh, group messages 
by some key and uh, it might be both windowed and non-windowed. What does it mean actually to be, to be a, uh, to, uh, for aggregation to be windowed? Well, for the non-windowed aggregation, as you may expect, it's a never-ending aggregate. So once you aggregate some data by any key, the aggregate would be run forever, or actually until you probably <laughs> stop using your application. But the problem is, how can you divide the, the aggregates in time, right? So the answer is, is windowing. Popular examples are tumbling window and hopping window, and those would be explained in the next slide. And, but the, the very nice feature is that in Kafka streams, you may use time windowing by only setting free, uh, free settings, free keys. That's going to be window size, window interval, and grace period. And the last one is extremely useful when you're handling with late events when the events are not arrived on time. So the first example is about a tumbling window. Here on the input, you can see uh, two types of, of, of records. One uh, type is colored with the, with the uh, green, and the second is blue. So you can imagine that those are two types of keys of these messages. And those are grouped into, into two streams and divided into five minutes time windows. On this, in, this, in this image, you can see the time window duration is five minutes. The, the unit is not present here, but you can, you can imagine there is an imaginary mean written here. And the window interval is actually equal to the window duration. So that type of window we can call a tumbling window. Another example is a hopping window, and the window interval is smaller than the window duration. Then, as you may expect, and numerous windows are uh, aggregating the data in the same time. So yeah, what other transformations you can use with Kafka Streams? As I stood before, there are stateful operations like aggregate, and this is the most generic one. If you just want to uh, transform, let's say, many messages into one message of the same type, you may use reduce, or if you want actually just to count the messages, you may use the count operation. There are join operations, as well as uh, aggregates, those are windowed and non-windowed, and as well there are stateless operators like filter, map, flat map, you can see those. So how to perform a streaming topology with Kafka Streams? This is pretty, pretty easy. What you need to do is to provide a stream builder uh, instance and a properties instance. Those would not be described in this slide because, hey, I wanted to show you just the, the, just the key features, right, the, the key code. So the properties uh, that is shown right here, that's, that variable contains uh, information about the Kafka brokers, the host port of the brokers and the partitions and so on, and the builder you actually create just here. What you, what you see here is that we accept uh, messages of the key string, of the type of the key string, and the value is some kind of input event. Uh, the example here shows the unique word count problem, and this is a very naive approach to do it. Uh, I won't actually waste the time to, to describe all of it. I will include those slides uh, probably somewhere later so that you can see about how easy it is to perform this, but nevertheless, this example, this solution is not performant. A unique word count problem can be solved for the big data in many other ways, and those uh, solutions will be described on the ne next slides by Miron. Yeah. Um, so why do we need those probabilistic data structures? Uh, before I start, a little disclaimer. I'm going to talk about distributed systems performance, which I estimated using my personal computer, so the exact values may differ noticeably from my results. Nevertheless, they are still interesting. So imagine we have a such case. We have organizations and visits of users in these organizations. We, here are some numbers about the data set. 1,000 of organizations, 10 million of visit events per hour, 10 years of such history, and 1 billion of distinct users in total. Uh, organizations are hierarchical, and hierarchy forms a tree. Uh, that means that, for example, if some users visit shop A, he also visits New York and USA, and a huge company to which this whole tree belongs. Um, and that also means that um, there will be a lot of organization 
uh, with huge number of distinct users in total. So uh, now some inf information about volume of the data. Uh, visit events are in form user ID, organization ID, and timestamp. We have 860 billions of events in total, which sum up to 90 petabytes of raw events in total. Um, and we want to solve such a problem. Answer how many distinct users was in some time range in few organizations. And when time range is subset of last month with hourly precision and for the rest of ranges with daily precision. Acceptable performance of such 100 queries uh, is under five seconds. So how we can solve uh, such, a, such a problem? Uh, first approach, naive. Uh, we have database with index organization ID timestamp. We collect data in sets grouped by organization ID hour. Uh, query database by organization and range. Uh, we, we retrieve sets. Uh, we merge sets and finally return size of the final set. Well, this approach has a lot of problem. Um, it, uh, efficient query needs at least 11 gigabytes of RAM. Um, it's extremely slow. It needs at least 44 seconds for one query. Under optimistic assumption of retrieving 2 billion of users because of duplicates, adding to hash that take about 20 seconds on 3.5 gigahertz core. Moreover, we must retrieve these users from disk. It would take at least 32 seconds for average SSD drive. So for example, if you have six times uh, three and a half gigahertz processor with 176 gigaby gigabytes of RAM, it would take at least five minutes for such 100 queries. It is unacceptable. So uh, maybe some uh, distributed approach. Yeah, MapReduce, yeah, MapReduce. Uh, so we have uh, 1,000 of working nodes. We compute hash for each user ID, uh, or oh, here. Um, we spread users with hashes across nodes such that sets of hashes in nodes are disjunctive. Here, we count distinct uh, users in each node and finally some result. We can just add the results because we ensure that sets of users in these nodes are disjunctive. Yeah, great, great. So, we have 1,000 nodes, uh, 0 0.11 gigabytes of RAM per node, and total time of 100 queries is 4.5 seconds. Not bad, not bad, not bad. There is one problem. Um, yeah, we just utilize 1,000 of worker nodes to solve our count district problem. How about solving the problem using my phone? Well, because perhaps your request for 1,000 nodes look like this, but it's usually like look like this. Uh, yeah. So uh, count distinct using phone resources. What do we need? One two gigahertz core, 450 megabytes of RAM, 10 gigabytes of disk space, and total time of 100 queries is 0 0.6 seconds. Wait, wait, what? 10 gigabytes of disk space and 90 petabytes of raw events. Is it possible? <laughs> Not exactly, but it is possible to serve accurate answers with high probability. How? Using sketches. Sketches is a bunch of data structures, algorithms, which are one pass. A one pass, that means that algorithms need to touch only one item. If you have a stream, it needs only to touch one, one item to compute final result. Small in size, fast to update, fast to merge without losing accuracy, and able to serve approximate result, usually a trade-off between space accuracy and probability. What does it mean, trade-off between space accuracy and probability? Well, the most general answer is the more space, the better accuracy, and the higher probability, the worse accuracy. Uh, so back to solving count distinct with phone resources. Um, so uh, how we can solve the problem? We keep sketch for each organization and time windows. Time windows are hourly, daily, and every, ten, uh, every 100 days. And assuming events could be processed when they are created, when event comes, I fit corresponding sketches with it. And finally, when the query comes, I retrieve corresponding sketches and merge them. So great. And what are you going to do if an amount of users grows 100 times? In first approach, you have to wait and wait 
and wait and wait and wait or build some 100 more powerful hardware. Um, in distributed approach, also using set, not a problem. You, you only need 100 more uh, nodes. And using sketches, yeah, absolutely nothing, because sketches are orders of magnitude smaller than data they are represent. Uh, of course, we are not going to compute everything using four. For example, if you want to process whole data in acceptable time, we need something more powerful. With sketches, we can easily scale our computations to the distributed system because you can scale your system horizontally using arbitrary partition and you can predict uh, um, resource usages for each worker node because sketchers are small and fast. Uh, and streams love sketches. Sketches are one pass algorithm, which is usually a requirement for efficient uh, stream processing system. Sketches are small. Uh, size is usually with upper bound between one kilobyte and 100 kilobytes, and that means that you can pass sketch forward the stream. And sketches are unlikely to be a bottleneck in the stream because they are fast. So now I want to present uh, some examples of problems which can be solved using sketches. For distant counting, we have uh, HLL, CPC, and theta. For quantums and histograms, KLL and T digest. And for frequent items, Misra Grace algorithm. Uh, okay, uh, distant counting. Uh, we have uh, three sketches hyperlog lock, compressed prob probabilistic counting, and theta. And uh, now I want to briefly summarize these three uh, sketches. Uh, well, which one to choose? It depends what you need. If you only knew the union of set sketches, then hyperlog lock or compressed probability counting would be a better choice. But if you need intersection or differences of set sketches, then theta would be a better choice. Uh, mm, I've mentioned that if we need only unions of sets, the best choice would be HLL or CPC. So first, a little comparison of these two sketches. Uh, now, uh, I represent a history of evolution of this algorithm. Uh, in 1985, uh, Flajold and Martin uh, invited uh, algorithm for uh, distinct counting. Um, in 2003, Durant Flajolet uh, invited LogLog, which beats FM algorithm. In 2007, uh, was invited HyperLogLog, which beats LogLog. In 2013, even better HyperLogLog, and 2017, back to FM -log algorithm. So long invited better estimator for uh, this uh, FM algorithm. And uh, in fact, uh, this structure with his estimator beats uh, the best hyperlog lock. So um, trade-off between accuracy and RAM is similar. Uh, if you consider only just updates, uh, speed of such updates is similar, uh, both for HALL and CPC. Uh, speed, but if we consider updates and compression with uh, serialization, uh, then CPC is better. And um, trade-off accuracy to storage, CPC is better. So CPC is overall better than hyperlog lock. Uh, however, uh, its superiority isn't smashing. And for more details, I refer to excellent paper of uh, Kevin J. Lang, Back to the Future, and even more nearly optimal cardinality estimation alg algorithm. OK, so now. Uh, uh, hyperlog log CPC versus theta, uh, if you only need unions. Hyperlog log and CPC serve similar accuracy to theta using 16 times less memory, so no reason to use theta. But if we have intersection and differences, uh, we can, we can using inclusion exclusion rule with uh, hyperlog log and CPC, uh, estimate intersection and differences, but in fact, it doesn't work well. And intersection and differences in theta uh, are no problem. Uh, for example, if you have uh, three sets ABC with similar size, and inter size of inter their intersection is about 10% of each set, then theta serves uh, similar accuracy to HLL uh, or CPC using 4.9 times less memory. Um, yeah. Mm, but the mathematical error bounds for theta intersection and differences aren't very straightforward, so for more details, I refer to data sketches webpage and Lee wrote sketch equations paper. 
Uh, next, uh, quantiles and histograms. Um, now I want to summarize two sketches for computing quantiles and histograms. So what are quantiles and histograms? Uh, we have a stream of values of size n, and k over n quantile is which value is k value, while histogram answer a question how many values was in value range from a to b. Uh, yeah, these are very useless uh, summary of your data. Uh, useful, useful. <laughs> so a little comparison. Domain, T-Digest works only for floating point numbers, while KL works for arbitrary domain with arbitrary order. And accuracy of quantiles, uh, KL has mathematically proven er error bounds, independent of both distribution and stream messages order. For uniform normal distribution, T-Digest is better. Uh, for growing blocks, KL is better, and is this, this is example of some nasty distribution and order of your data in which uh, T-Digest doesn't work well. And for quantiles very close to zero and one, T-Digest is better. Okay, and speed, uh, updates. KL is about three times better, and while serialization of KL is a little bit slower, deserialization of KL is uh, faster than uh, T-Digest, and if we sum up deserialization and serialization, KL is about 1.3 times better. Okay, uh, so, um, I want to show you some charts which present comparison of sketched estimates to exact values. It isn't comprehensive analysis of accuracy of sketches, rather um, evaluation of simple example to convince you that sketches don't bite. Yeah, this in count hourly, uh, you see, blue line is exact values, red is theta, and uh, yellow is uh, uh, hyperlog log, yeah? Every four hours, uh, okay, uh, this is uh, set differences, so result from uh, set, uh, set differences and comparison of blue line is exact values and red is uh, estimate from theta. And the same for every four hours. Okay, histogram uh, from KLL, uh, blue, blue uh, columns are result from KLL and red are real uh, exact values, not bad. Uh, quantiles, yeah, <laughs> do you see blue, blue dots? <laughs> yeah, they're behind the red one. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? Uh, okay, um, most frequent, uh, here we have, um, the query was 30 the most frequent items, this chart shows how much of 30 the most frequent items returned by Mithra Yes, algorithm matches the real 30 the most frequent items. Yeah, not bad result. And here is, uh, shows the 30 the most frequent items along with number of occur occurrences. Uh, yeah, uh, red is estimated result and blue is real hits. Yeah, so sketches rules. Okay, uh, so thank you, Mira, for the interesting, actually interesting part of this presentation. Now let's move on to what we've actually prepared for, for you uh, to, to connect all those information that can be a little bit overwhelming, but extremely useful. Uh, so how can one of you use actually this information? Well, probably some of you use Kafka streams now. So how can you join those two concepts actually? There are some advanced data analy analytics operators uh, in Spark, like Bloomfilter, CountMeSketch, HLL, uh, using like library like Spark Alchemy. But for Kafka streams, well, not much. You have those this aggregate operator that I've uh, mentioned before, and that's it. You you need to just integrate all of these uh, all of these structures by yourself. So actually, what we've done, we did that. So we are introducing a probabilistic data structures for Kafka streams library shortly Kafka Streams PDS. And uh, what we've done, we've integrated a whole lot of uh, probabilistic data structures, all aforementioned like Hyperlog, CPC, Theta, T-Digest, and Mistra Gris. And uh, we made use of in-memory caches to, to 
uh, for bigger structures because wh whereas uh, hyperlog lock is about maximum 10 kilobytes, data sketches may be uh, from 100 to let's say 300 kilobytes and that's quite a lot. So if you aggregate the data in Kafka streams, you need to remember that every message is serialized. So the ser serialization overhead is quite, quite important. So we've made use of in-memory caches in Kafka streams to actually spill the data uh, uh, periodically and, uh, and, and contain the information about the structures in memory. So we support both windowed and non-windowed aggregations as well as both stream and wall clock time semantics. Uh, the last part wasn't, wasn't actually uh, described by me here, but you can find this information in, in Kafka Streams documentation. There's not, not much time to, to describe it now. And as well, we, we've made a step to, uh, to make serialization much easier using Kafka Serdes and our library uh, Gen Codec. So once again, remember the, the first example of unique, unique uh, when you unique word count, oh, something's wrong here. Okay, never mind. Uh, the first example I was I was talking before, right? So you just you just need to provide the, the builder. Uh, where's the button? The builder, and you need to group by the keys and window and perform aggregate, right? And this is not not very performant. We don't want that. We want to use what hyper hyperlock lock uh, for the for the big data, and this is this code actually comes from our library. What you need to do is to provide the builder, stream the data and use our operator HLL and provide something like a spill period. As I said before, you need to be, uh, you need to focus on, on, on the uh, data structure size. So, so here we say every five minutes the, the data will be serialized to our state stores and follow to the changelog topics of Kafka. So as you can see, this is extremely handy. We come with uh, four, uh, four lines of code if we like inline this this piece of uh, HLL, which which I don't recommend, the uh, windowed example. This is windowed HLL. We specify spill period, and we also specified uh, time windows, as well as you can specify those time windows right here in the window by. Okay, and you start it, and you can start using uh, hyperlock lock or other data probabilistic data structures, just like that. So yeah, when's the release? It will be soon. Uh, actually, we've tried to, uh, to, to introduce the library today. We didn't manage to, but it will be released soon. Uh, so you can find it on the Alpha system GitHub. And when will it will be released, feel free to contribute. So yeah, thank you. Uh, we didn't have much time left to, to discuss more uh, Kafka streams related subject, but you can meet me at uh, Krakow Apache Kafka Meetup. I will try to, to do some more talks about Kafka Streams and uh, the ideas behind this, this library using processor API and so on. So yeah, thank you. We have, uh, according to plan, we have one minute. So uh, another couple of questions actually. So. Uh, will you be here for the rest of the day on the conference? Yeah, sure, sure. So uh, feel free to ask uh, guys the questions that you that you ask because I see there are interesting questions. I am going to pick one, the one that was the upvoted, uh, the the most upvoted, and the question is: Are there cases where the differences between actual data and estimation are significant? Mm. Do you need a further, further maybe clarification to the question? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I uh, I think uh, in some sports it might be <laughs> if you if you are uh, counting uh, when. Um, uh, f for example, when uh, you, you, you have uh, 100 uh, of uh, the best results and it really matter what will be in this 100 the best results, for example. But I'm just... Uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, um, I just made up right now, so... <laughs> yeah, this is not easy to find an example like, like that, but 
I bet there are some, some cases that you can't use probabilistic data structures because because those are probabilistic results, right? Sometimes you, you need to focus on the exact result. It is pretty hard now to just find one of the examples, but I, I'm sure uh, like in, in some minutes we will find the scenarios for you. So later you can find us here. All right. So as I said, I'm not going to ask any more questions uh, because we are out of time. But uh, feel free to, to catch up with guys and ask them the questions. And uh, for now, we have another presentation in 10 minutes by Renato Cavalcanti. And the presentation would start precisely at 11. Thank you. <laughs>